to keeping you waiting for a few minutes, uh, a little bit more than a few minutes, but uh, apologies nonetheless. Welcome to Denel, which is one of the six state-owned companies that fall under the uh, overall management or oversight of the Department of Public Enterprises and the Ministry uh, of Public Enterprises. We are here today to announce that we have uh, appointed a new interim board for Denel. And the word interim here means that it is subject to uh, confirmation at a cab the first cabinet meeting that government will hold shortly. The appointment of the board, of course, is in line with uh, what President Ramaphosa has said in the State of the Nation address, which is, and I quote, that we will intervene decisively to stabilize and revitalize state-owned enterprises. The recent actions we have taken at ESCOM to strengthen governance, root out corruption, and restore its financial position is just the beginning. So this is the second step that uh, as government we are taking in order to head in the direction that the president indicated. You will recall that in the uh, that we need to strengthen governance, root out commission, uh, corruption, I beg your pardon, and restore the financial position of state-owned companies. Secondly, to ensure that state-owned companies fulfill their economic and developmental mandates. Thirdly, that we will address the challenges at SOCs, which are structural. They do not have, uh, for example, if they do not have sufficient revenue streams to fund their operational requirements, that's not necessarily with specific reference to uh, Denel, otherwise uh, my colleagues here will say, can we have a bailout immediately? There's much more to do first. Fourthly, to review the funding uh, models of SOCs in consultation uh, with stakeholders. Uh, and it's quite clear now that SOCs cannot just borrow their way out of the difficulties that some of them find themselves in. Uh, fifth, they must change the way the boards are appointed as so that people with appropriate expertise, experience, and integrity serve in these vital positions. And today, I believe that we will be presenting uh, a team, the NL SOC, uh, which certainly has these qualities and remove board members from any role in procurement and work with the Auditor General to strengthen uh, external audit processes. Of course, this will be uh, a process that we will follow over time and certainly one that the uh, board will apply it, it itself to. Denel itself, uh, ha over time, has uh, ha had a reasonably proud history. There were times when it was, in fact, financially stable it had a good reputation uh, in the capital markets. It could borrow money on, in, in those markets. But uh, over the recent past, that reputation has regrettably been lost. And uh, much of the good work that it used to do, uh, certainly in terms of earning the trust of uh, and who it would relate to both as suppliers uh, and as lenders to, to Denel, uh, has, in fact, fallen on uh, difficult times. So the changing of the board is the first step that uh, we are taking as, as government. Clearly, their role is to ensure, as the president indicated, that good governance is restored. Secondly, that uh, to the extent that Denel was a victim of and participated in the processes of state capture, that those processes be reversed. But most importantly, you have over 4,000 people working in Denel, and some of its divisions has a very large number of people who are engineers, who are valuable South African resources, who have unique skills in aviation, in missile technology, uh, and in all sorts of other uh, related uh, activities and endeavors that Denel actually engages in. During the course of today, uh, our DPE team and myself had the opportunity to visit two of the divisions, Denel Land Systems and Denel uh, Dynamics, learned a lot about uh, the uh, various products that these two divisions are actually uh, developing at this point in time, 
uh, some of them absolutely crucial to our own defense force, and some of which are very marketable, both in, on the African continent and elsewhere in the world as well. I also learned a lot about missiles and the different types that are uh, produced by Danel, and some of which are unique products uh, as far as the world market is, is actually concerned. We also spent about an hour and a half with the five trade unions that are represented at Danel in order to open a line of communication between ourselves as the ministry and the labor unions, and we've encouraged the board to do the same so that there's an open line of communication and uh, we create an atmosphere at Danel where there's great and uh, there's a greater sharing of both the assessment of the company itself uh, and some of the strategies and plans that will have to be put into place in order to get ourselves out of difficulty. The last of the meetings before we met with the board uh, was a meeting with about 100 suppliers to Danel. Many of them have uh, difficulties in extracting money uh, from Danel for supplies that they've already made. And let's be frank with yourselves and the public that what this meant in some instances, for example, was a youth company. Uh, when, uh, by that I mean a company uh, run and uh, set up by young people in South Africa that is owed 180,000 rounds for a few months. And certainly give some explanations to us about why 180,000 rounds can't be paid so that a youth-owned company can uh, move on to the next stage of its development. Yet others uh, uh, you know, spoke about debts of one million to uh, running into tens of millions. But the message we communicated and I thought resonated with the 100 odd suppliers to Danel that were in that room was that we are in a sense opening a new chapter in Danel's existence. And uh, with that new chapter, suppliers had begun to develop a level of empathy and understanding. But at the same time, uh, the Danel management and ourselves will look a lot more carefully at how some of the immediate needs of these suppliers can be met so that they could continue to supply Danel with the uh, parts and other equipment that Danel requires in order to produce some of the equipment that they produce here uh, as, as well. There were some also very useful suggestions uh, coming from the suppliers in terms of either banks becoming a little bit more lenient or certain government uh, financial institutions uh, going out of their way so that you could create more leeway for them uh, in order to manage this difficult transition period as, as well. So we hope that uh, as we get a better understanding and the board begins to find its feet, uh, these are the issues that would uh, lead us into this new chapter. And I'm optimistic that notwithstanding the difficulties that have uh, obtained uh, in Danel over the recent past, that we are at the beginnings of a new uh, path towards recovery on the one hand, making sure that Danel remains an important uh, component of uh, the arms industry, if you like, in South Africa, but uh, equally importantly, remains a crucial partner uh, to the Department of Defense and AMSCO, its, its procurement agency. So let me introduce you now, ladies and gentlemen, to the new board members. The chairperson of the board is Ms. Montelat Latla. She's sitting here on, on my left. Uh, she'll say a few words af after I finish. She's a former CEO, as some of you might know, of AXA. Uh, is uh, also a ex non-executive director of various companies and uh, has uh, a lot of experience uh, to in, in terms of running corporates but also sitting on boards as well. Our uh, second board member is Mr. Zoli Kunene, who's sitting on my left there. Uh, should I give you some exercise? <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind standing for a moment. Just a minute, Mr. Zoli Kunene. He's also a very, very experienced business person and uh, was formerly on the Danel board as well. He's a founder uh, member of Kunene Brothers Holding Limited and uh, uh, currently serves on various boards uh, and is a former trade unionist, interestingly, as, as well. Not present today, unfortunately, 
is Professor Marwala, the new uh, Vice Chancellor of the University of Johannesburg, who's a scientist in his own right and uh, has agreed very kindly uh, to serve on this board and give us the benefit of his experience. He's also a director of the State Information Technology uh, Agency. The fourth member of the board is regrettably also not here, General T.T. Matanzima, who is currently the, the Ombud of the SANDF, and he is uh, very involved in, in the funeral arrangements of Mrs. Uh, Marike Zella Mandela at the moment, and a, a close family member, but has very kindly agreed to serve on the board and bring his military experience uh, to the board and to Danelle as well. The fifth member of the board is Ms. Gloria Serobe, She's also in front of you. I can't discriminate. I've asked a man to stand up, so the woman must stand up to it. <laughs> uh, she's a executive director and founding member of Whiphold and uh, has been involved in uh, various capacities, both in an executive and non-executive uh, directorships uh, in All Mutual, in uh, Adcorp Holdings, etc. The sixth member is a chartered accountant Mr. Talib Sadiq. That's the Mr. Sadiq, and he has served uh, on Basil Reed, uh, is the Chief Financial Officer and Finance Director since uh, 1 October 2016. He's also the, uh, served as Group Financial Director of Times Media, and when he distributes his CV, you will see that he's got many other forms of involvement as well. Our seventh uh, director is Ms. Sue Rapkin, who until recently uh, was in the Department of Defense, has a long uh, history as a freedom fighter, uh, and has been associated with the defense community for a long time, and brings a very different perspective to Danel as, as well. Our eighth member is Dr. Sibusiso Tsubisi. Uh, he's also had some association with Danelle before, and is currently the CEO of the Wits Business School. And prior to that, he was CEO, as some of you would know, of the CSIR, and uh, various other government entities as, <coughs> as well. Our uh, n ninth member, regrettably, is not here as well, Michelle Carolus, who is uh, chairperson of P uh, Piotona uh, Holdings. She's also served as chairperson of SAA, uh, and CEO of uh, Satua, and uh, a former uh, South African High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. Our tenth person is uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Siotula. She's uh, also there. She's going to stand up for you. Has been an independent, non-executive director at Growth Point Properties. She's also a CA in her own right, and sits on various boards, uh, including Barclays, All Mutual, the Royal Buffer King Holdings, and South African uh, breweries. Uh, our 11th board member is uh, Mr. Magazzi. Uh, Mr. Magazzi, he uh, looks very young, but it claims he's retired now. Uh, he was acting chief of the medium business uh, at the Business Connection until he's retired. Interestingly, holds uh, a Disney Institute Leadership Excellence uh, Program, and has been also at Gibbs as well. So I'm not sure he's going to make Disney movies in South Africa now, but we'll see. The, and the last of the, 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 the members is uh, Mr. Mnisi, who is a, a, an attorney and uh, is the director of MNS, which is a, uh, an attorney's firm. He's a former lecturer in business law and mercantile law at the University of Johannesburg and has been involved in the advisory panel to the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see we have quite a, an illustrious group of people, very diverse sets of uh, skill, some knowledge uh, of Danelle from prior involvement, but also uh, a wealth of business experience which is going to help at Danelle to figure out what next to do in order to make Danelle a sustainable business uh, in, the, in the year that lies ahead. And we have every confidence that uh, this team 
together with other changes that might be made in, in due course, depending on their findings and recommendations, will help uh, Danel uh, restore itself both to financial s sustainability, but also ensure a new level of integrity uh, in its operations and in, in financial management as well. Before I take any questions, let me ask uh, Ms. Uh, the new chairperson, Ms. Tatla, to say a few words. Minister, thank you very much for the opportunity you have given to all of us as a board of directors to serve this country uh, by putting and pulling together all of our experiences, our expertise, and our knowledge base to revitalize DINEL. Um, I think you are correct that the institution um, used to be a giant at certain times in the past, but that does not mean that it has ended then. Uh, but that there are more opportunities, considering that at the core of DINEL, we're talking about technologies um, that often would start looking like they're just defense and they end up in our households um, because technology really emanates and grows that way. So for all of us, and I think I'm correct to say, we feel honored to have been asked to play a role at this time of our country. Um, we believe that we have also grown up um, as a people to be capable to look at where we are, what challenges we have, what solutions are possible, and to really try and find solutions from within ourselves to make our institutions start to serve the purposes that the people of South Africa have set them for. And um, the experiences here are brilliant. Um, I feel honored as a chair uh, to come and serve with a team as experienced as this one. The only caution I would put to everyone is that um, coming to play a role in such an old institution um, and coming in within April, which is the first month of the new financial year, 2018-19, which started 1st of April, it means that for the next few months, this board will be focused on nothing else but getting the financial statements of 2017-18 right, getting to understand what the core business of Dinell is about, understanding all of the issues that the minister has articulated well, understanding some of the issues that the press has written about in the past, to really come up with a stepped approach to designing a solution as a team. So you would have to bear with us a bit, but as men and women, we think that we are ready and capable to support you, and, uh, and we hope that you continue to lead us and support us um, as our shareholder minister, and, um, and that the society as well will have the warm wishes to support us to deliver a sustainable, vibrant institution for the future but it's gonna take us a little while. Thank you very much. I'm sure you don't have any questions. <laughs> she laughs and then she asks a question. Can I ask a question? Can you give us an idea of the deficit on a monthly basis, you, you um, refer to the credit as not being paid. What is the, the monthly deficit at the moment? <coughs> that only the CFO can answer, but let him prepare for that. The second question, if any. All right, so let's get him to answer that. Where? Oh, sorry. He's well hidden. Hi, Guy Martin here from Defence Web. Um, there were rumours of uh, possible staff cuts at the um, Is it too soon to say these will be going ahead? Well, rumours are rumours. Uh, we have, nobody has any plans that I'm aware of at this point in time. So I think as the chair of the board has said as well, uh, let's give them a few months to get a grip on what works and what doesn't work in this business. And the last thing we would like to do is to add to the unemployment problem uh, in, in South Africa. Uh, but it's also important that we engage with labor as we started today 
uh, and look at the core uh, business itself to see what is it that can be reorientated or, and uh, redirected in order that we can actually sustain the current level of staffing and the current level of expenditure. Uh, a lot of that depends on the, on, the, on the level of revenue that we can ultimately get as well. So it's early days and there's no uh, truth at all that somebody is sitting somewhere with a plan that I'm aware of. Hi, uh, Rebecca Campbell from East Green News. Uh, just to clarify from uh, what has been said, do we take it that the, there is as yet no new strategy for the future of the mail and that will be considered in the coming months? Well, there have been lots of strategies and lots of plans. I think what you now have is a new board and uh, you have also in place lots of acting uh, managers of one sort or another in various divisions as well. Let them take stock of uh, uh, some of those factors which will influence the kind of planning that we do. Uh, we also need to enter into a keen dialogue with our partners in the Department of Defense uh, as, as well. And then in a few months time, let's come back to you and say, this is where we think uh, things need to go. Genevieve Pinter from Business Day. Um, Minister, you also spoke about reversing the role and things that have happened in Denal in terms of state capture. Um, have you looked at taking action against former board members who put Denal in the position that it's, that it's in now? A lot of times it seems like, and I think the case that was something uh, as well with um, people like Anoj Singh, etc. they resign, they move on. Do they get away with it? And whoever comes in to clean up the mess must clean up. Or do you leave it to the state capture inquiry to um, sort out? Do you actually lay charges? What happens to those former people that put Denel in this position besides losing their jobs? Well, firstly, the president has said, you know, the, the commission must do its job since it's been set up to do that, which is to, if you like, uncover the manner in which uh, state capture actually occurred and what happened in broad terms in each institution. Secondly, in parallel with that, if there are current charges to be faced. Uh, for example, one of the trade unions informed us that they have laid charges, I think, uh, uh, against one of the former members of, uh, members of the former board uh, and perhaps some executives. They will give us some more information in the next day or two. So obviously that must go through. So where there are prosecutions, the prosecutions must proceed. And thirdly, uh, we have started discussing how we uh, start holding even people who might have left uh, accountable. So our lawyers will be looking at uh, that issue as well. And fourthly, we've got to start tracking down if money has left this organization, it's time to now ask the question, where's the money, follow the money, and how do we go about recovering the money? And as you know, we have laws in this country where if you are a recipient of the proceeds of crime, then you have some accountability uh, to the law and the constitution in this country as well. So, yeah, it's not a question of leaving it, it's just a question of following all of these avenues through uh, as, as they apply. You have a number. Yeah, thank, you, thank you, Minister. I think uh, as, as you have uh, articulated before, on an, on an average basis, on a monthly basis, we sit with about 350 million South African rand of uh, uh, unpaid over. And hopefully that begins to change as we go forward. Any last question? If not, waiting. Is there they always seem to be hidden. <laughs> so, a quick question about: the, um, Will there be any changes to uh, management apart from the board? instance the top executives or will that be uh, decided at a later stage? Let, let the board find its feet and let them, as I said, do their homework first. Uh, they've got to earn their director's fees as well, you see. <laughs> and then, then, and then, we'll, uh, then we'll evaluate the position. I think when you look at the way 
the governance of um, SOEs is laid by the PFMA. The role on executives belongs to the board, and um, in that four months of breathing time and a year or so of understanding where things are, we'll get to know our management team very well and, and do whatever is necessary with the management team to um, revitalize the business. Um, but shareholders are shareholders and policymakers are policymakers. But in the end, the board of directors takes very, very serious responsibility around what happens in the business. And I hope that we would remain transparent, engaged, um, so that you don't feel that you're guessing. Um, but it is indeed the role of the, the board of directors uh, to engage on that. Sorry, Minister, the last one. I think I'm trying to divert a little bit. No, no, let's hear you. Who are you? Oh, sorry. That's Bennett from the New Age, the New Age newspaper. I just want to find out now, because this is the second uh, uh, radical uh, change of uh, SOEs. We've seen that with ESCOM, now it's DNL. Do you have any plans about uh, SAA? I'm so sorry to divert, because now I'm talking about something out of this material reading. But any plans about SAA in the future? No, the SAA board was changed recently as well. So if you go back and do your homework, <laughs> you'll see that there's a new chairperson of the board there, and they report at the moment to the Treasury. Can't hear you. I'm saying since the appointment of the uh, SAA new board, nothing much has been changed. At least do you think that the SAA new board or SAA in general is still stand a change, uh, a, a chance to turn around or is just uh, uh, an empty share? No, I think you must address that to Minister Nene. Uh, when, when SAA comes back to DPE, then I'll answer the question. <laughs> okay, there was one last question here in front. Good afternoon, Minister and the board. Uh, my name is Siseko Jumbo with Business Report. Um, Minister, can you clarify um, the, the board members you, you, you announced today? Do you have any from the previous board that they retained? Can you just clarify if this is an interim? No. So this is an interim year? Yeah, what has happened over a period of time is that there have been resignations, mm -hmm. particularly since the end of February. Uh, there were only six yeah. board members left by, by the time we got to February 2018. Then the chairperson resigned. According to the letter we have, it's the 26th of February 2018. Subsequently, there have been further resignations, and there were two board members left, and uh, this is an entirely new board. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.